Good morning, fam. Happy Sunday. Welcome back to Erica's EDC. And today we have a very exciting review of the Benchmade Bugout and S30V versus the Spyderco Sage 5 Lightweight in S30V. Guys, this is a project that I have been working on for the whole month of September. We've been testing both of these knives, both of these steels, doing a lot of comparison work, a lot of sharpening, a lot of different edges, and seeing not only who does the heat treat better on S30V, but trying to debunk the whole chippy S30V blade steel rumor, right? Because that's one that we've heard a lot circulating around the community. And I wanted to really like firsthand see if it is a chippy steel, or maybe if it depends more on like the heat treat and who's doing it. So for the whole month of September, we tested these knives. I have a lot to share with you guys. There's not gonna be a ton to look at in this video, so you can totally turn this on, take a shower, I don't know, change your oil. You can just listen to it, not a ton to see on the screen, so don't worry about it. Grab a coffee, maybe a snack and relax, okay? We are in the bed of my truck because the lighting is perfect right now for me to be sitting here. Well, other than the shadow on my face, but um, I'm usually in the truck bed when I record. So let's get into this, guys. Um, this was a really fun review to do. We did a lot of different edge finishes on these. And if you want more information on those finishes, go back and watch the updates. I did a weekly update throughout the whole month of September on these knives, kind of talking more in depth about how the edge finishes were performing. Uh, that way I, you know, this video would be like an hour long if I went over all of it in this. But um, basically with the Benchmade bug out, we started with a factory edge. I've had tons of bug outs, but this particular one, when we started the testing, was running the factory edge. It was, um, the bevels were even, but the actual bevel itself was pretty rough. It, it had like those little tiny waves going through it. Um, it looked and felt kind of like burnt and crusty, uh, but I obviously wanted to test the factory edge to see how it was doing. So that's what we started with on the bug out. On the Sage 5 Lightweight, I had done some like mini testing before September and I needed to put a fresh edge on this um, during that. So this one we started with a, a different edge. This one was, I believe, polished and um, the factory edge that it came with was much better than the bug out. It performed very well. So um, basically, you know, starting points for each of these. Benchmade was kind of seeming crusty and burnt Spyderco had a, a better edge in terms of edge retention. It just seemed a little less um, fatigued, I guess. But when we, when we started this, we were working with a more polished edge on this knife. Um, both of these have a 15 DPS edge. It probably looks a little different in terms of the width of the bevel on these, but that is because the um, stock thickness is much different on these. We have a really thin blade stock on the Benchmade bug out. And then the Sage 5 Lightweight is honestly pretty thick. It does thin out because it's full flat ground, but you can just see how thick this is here. And um, so that edge bevel looks probably a little more wide. Also, sorry about like the glare from the sunshine. That's going to probably impact this, but what are we going to do, right? Um, okay, so the factory edge on the Benchmade bug out, it was okay it was definitely feeling fatigued a little crusty a little burnt um it worked well while it worked until it didn't basically um i did try to strop back the factory edge it stropped back okay but it it was really just telling me that it i needed to remove that factory edge pattern and start fresh because it, it was just so roughly done i guess um the spider co with the factory edge that i used before the testing started it was good I also stropped that back. It, I think it stropped back twice before I was feeling like I needed to just kind of remove that and start over. And then the polished edge worked very well for a good amount of time on this knife. Once I worked with those edges, then we went into some really interesting territory. So this one, I put a very high polished edge on. Like I said, all of this is on video. 
Um, you can go back and watch those updates if, if you're more interested in like the depth of that um, uh, finish that I did. Sorry, it is early. <laughs> um, but we did a, a very highly polished edge on the bug out and then we ended up convexing this just for fun. And the reason being is because I wanted to see if convexing S30V would maybe help with that toughness, right? Because part of this testing was trying to debunk S30V being chippy. I was trying to figure out if there are ways to go about it where we can still hold that toothiness and that edge retention of S30V without having it chip. So I convex this edge, again, 15 DPS, and it worked very well and it was very tough. Um, in one of the updates, I mentioned that I had a nine-year-old cutting through boxes with this. The box had staples and because she's nine, she tried to cut through the staples instead of like going around them or prying them out and hitting those copper staples in that box did nothing to the edge when it was convexed. So the convexed edge really did well with this knife. It definitely mildly compromised the edge retention because it did not last, it, you know, it didn't last as long as like a normal edge bevel, but we did have an extreme amount of toughness and it did not chip, roll, break, nothing when it was convexed. So my conclusion of that edge finish was that if you're in a blue collar field and you have a knife in S30V and you don't, you're not too worried about edge retention, but you're really looking for toughness and you're kind of looking for forgiveness out of your blade. Uh, if you convex it, you are maximizing that toughness from S30V and it may be beneficial to you. I know a lot of people aren't in blue collar fields using these types of knives. Um, but if you are, like like I was, and you know, Nicole is in a blue collar field, she uses Benchmades and Spydercos all the time. Um, her boyfriend, Trevor, same thing. He has a, a mini grip. He has a K390 leaf jumper that I gave him and they just use their knives. You know, it doesn't matter if it's $250 or 30 bucks from the hardware store, they just use them. If you are one of those people and you want to maximize your toughness out of your knife, convex the edge, you, like I said, are losing a little bit of edge retention from my testing, but you really have that complete forgiveness in your blade and you don't have to worry about hitting staples or nails or anything hard and, you know, damaging your edge. Then, after we found out all of that information, we put a different type of polished edge on this with some different stones and strops and such. Well, you know, I'll get into that in a minute. Um, and this one we did a semi-polished edge on, and this is actually an edge that I used a 600 grit DMT stone with, so like a working edge, and then I stropped it so it looks a little reflective. Granted, it is filthy. I mean, look at this thing. It's gross. Um, but when it was clean, it was it was a little bit reflective. It's You can kind of see it there. But this is more of a working edge, right? And then the, the Benchmade is pretty, pretty highly polished. They're both kind of dirty, though. So that, this is where things got interesting to me, right? Because, again, these are both S30V blade steel. They're obviously from the same place. They're made by the same company. It's just two different geometries done by two different companies with two different heat treats. So this is where it got interesting. I polished the Benchmade bug out pretty highly. I used the Spider Coast stones that um, Michael Richter lent to me, loaned to me, lent to me, um, medium grit and ultra fine grit. And then I worked through a whole bunch of stropping progressions down to i believe 0.5 micron that's on a video go check it out if you need more details and we got like a really clean polished edge very glistening and um with with the sage 5 lightweight we did the 600 grit dmt stone working edge stropped it with i think 1.5 micron um spray that michael made like diamond emulsion spray and then maybe one micron gunny juice i think um, it's so hard to remember all of this because we've been using these for a month, but what was interesting was the edge retention on the Benchmade bug out in S30V was above and beyond what it was with a working edge when it was polished. However, it did microchip. The Sage 5 lightweight did much better with a working edge, you know, not really polished, um, very toothy, wicked bitey. Um, that 600 grit DMT is, is pretty, it's a fine stone, but it gives a very toothy edge. And then we really just kind of like 
honed it with those strops, right? We didn't like highly polish it or, any, or anything. This was a working edge. This, this did much better um, than it did when it had the polished edge and it still had the toughness. So basically what I found out during this testing is that Benchmade's S30V on the bug out specifically does way better with a very, very high polish. It's still extremely toothy. It will cut for days and days and days. However, maybe because it is such a thin blade stock, you, you still have to be careful because it's, it's chippy. Um, it, that's just how it is. I had it chip multiple times throughout the entire testing, whether it was a working edge or a high polished edge, it didn't matter. It microchipped on occasion. Were the chips easy to get out? Yeah, but it did microchip throughout the entire testing. Um, but the edge retention with a highly, highly polished edge was honestly worth it and absolutely incredible. But if you were using this as your example of chippy steel, here it is. Um, that keeps the rumor true really weird that the sage 5 lightweight with a polished edge did not have the same edge retention it was not nearly as good as the bench made when it had a polished edge it just kind of like gave out much faster and once i put this 600 grit dmt working edge on here that wasn't as polished it will cut for days and days and days and days and it is still not chippy still not rolling nothing it's just more stable it's much better um so really interesting how you can have two steels that are literally the same, but just di different geometries and done differently from different companies. And they give totally different characteristics. And that's why I em emphasize so much on actually using and testing your knives before you do a review. Because if you just put out a blank statement, S30V is chippy because you chipped the fatigued factory edge. That is really a misrepresentation of the steel because you haven't actually used it. Like I don't think you can do a review unless you've actually used the knife you know, maybe sharpened it a couple times. Um, and that's why I do my testing for an entire month. We carried these consecutively for an entire month and use them and use them and use them, sharpen them, strop them, do, did everything with them so that we actually had data to provide at the end of the month on how these did. So to, two totally different outcomes from these. I'm honestly happy and impressed with both. I think you have to be more careful with the Benchmade S30V because it is chippy, but if you put a highly polished edge on it, it does incredibly well and it the edge retention just lasts forever. I was really enjoying using this. And the Sage 5 lightweight is just such a workhorse. It's, you know, it's extremely lightweight, but very durable because it has those full liners, you know? Like these are both lightweight knives coming in at under three ounces. This one's 1 1.8, this one's 2.8 or 9, I think. Um, this one has full liners, so you can't flex it. This one, you know, you can just completely mush around. But, um, yeah, this, you know, the Sage 5 just did so much better with a gritty, toothy working edge. And it had no issues with toughness at all throughout the entire thing, really. It just, you know, is a beast. This is a really great example of S30V done correctly with some severe stability in that edge because man, I thought for sure those staples were gonna just annihilate this thing and it, it didn't. So um, this one did much better with that bitey toothy edge. And I do think that is, you know, really connected to how thick this blade stock is. I, th I think when it was polished, it was just a little glassy maybe. Um, I think because this is so thick, it just needs that like bitey grit to, you know, grab material and move through it, I guess. When you glass this out and it's that thick, I think it just doesn't go through material as easily. So two totally different, you know, outcomes to these. Very interesting to me. So if I had any advice at the end of this whole thing, I would literally just say, polish up your Benchmade bug out. It will do phenomenal. Use a 600 grit DMT working edge on your Sage 5 Lightweight. It will do phenomenal. They're two very different knives. I, I really enjoy them. I would also say that I genuinely do think Spyderco is outdoing Benchmade in terms of their heat treat. I think it's more dialed in. I think it's more stable. I think it's better done. I think that, again, this is a great example of S30V done correctly. I think Spyderco does some of the best heat treat in 
the, the entire community. I've never really had an issue with spreader co heat treats. I've had my, you know, a handful of issues with bench made knives. And I feel that you really have to sharpen them, you know, five or seven times to get down to like the good steel, which is in my opinion, a little ridiculous. One or two sharpenings from any production knife company I can understand, right? Because they're whizzing through them so fast. But you know, after one sharpening with the Sage, this was really showing its true colors. Whereas the Benchmade, you know, it's still chippy. And maybe it won't be when I do, you know, three more sharpenings or something, but I just feel like Spyderco does a better heat treat than Benchmade from what I have seen so far. Um, I know people are going to start asking this, which one would I recommend more, the Benchmade Bug Out or the Sage 5 Lightweight? That's really personal preference. Although these are both lightweight knives coming in at under three ounces, they're very different. You can see that the Benchmade Bug Out is very slim in design. It's very sleek, very elegant, way lighter than the Sage 5 Lightweight. It also has that scale flex. Um, that can make your knife look off-centered. This knife is perfectly centered, but I sat on it. It was in my butt pocket and I sat on it and the scales warped and now it looks off-centered like pretty severely. And it it's tuned up perfectly. Like, look at where that blade is. Come on, that's silly. This is perfectly tuned up, nice and smooth, nice and snappy, all the goods, no issues. It, I literally just sat on the scales for a significant period of time, which I shouldn't have, and they bent and warped, and now it looks really off-center. You don't have to worry about that with the Sage 5 Lightweight. It has full liners, and it does have the FRN scales, so it's still lightweight and um, great for shorts carry in the summer, but you have that rigid factor with this where you can't flex it or anything and honestly you have the compression lock which is just simply more reliable than the axis lock from benchmade uh, i've never had issues knock on wood this is plastic <laughs> um i've never had issues with the benchmade omega springs but i know thousands upon thousands of people have so if you want something more reliable, I guess I would go with the Sage 5 Lightweight because the compression lock is more reliable. It doesn't have those little tiny moving parts that could fail on you. It's basically a liner lock on the back of the knife. So really reliable, still very smooth, fidgety, all that good stuff. Not that I care about fidget factor, um, but really reliable. This is just more robust and rigid, but you're still getting a super lightweight package. I will say it's a little bulky, in pocket i mean this is just a little wider than the benchmade bug out you know you have that thicker blade stock it's just a little more bulky in the pocket it takes up more real estate it's kind of like an egg shape whereas the benchmade bug out is very slim and sleek and you really don't even notice it's there but if this doesn't bother you if you're looking for all around more stability and just a better heat treat i guess i would go with the spider co in terms of price point, I believe that they're both overpriced. Benchmade has raised all of their prices outwardly on their knives, and the bug out is like $180 now, which is ridiculous to me. However, Spyderco also raised their prices. They were just really sneaky and quiet about it, and nobody really noticed until we started talking about it because of that. They're both overpriced, in my opinion, but I do think you're getting more bang for your buck out of the Spyderco because, again, it's more reliable, more rugged, and it probably won't give out on you as fast as the Benchmade. I don't have any experience with Spyderco's warranty. I know it used to be garbage. I've never used it. I've never had to use it. I've heard some great stories about it, and I've also heard some horror stories about people sending in their knives and never getting them back. Um, I have no comment on how the warranty would be with this if something happened to it. However, with Benchmade, I've used their warranty program a number of times. I've never had an issue. I've sent in five knives at a time to Benchmade, needing um, like screws removed that I stripped on accident or um, way back when I was not good at sharpening. I mean, I'm still not that great, but when I used to be really bad at sharpening, I messed up one of the edges on one of my knives to the point where I felt that I was not able to fix it. And I sent it into Benchmade and they put a fresh edge on it. Um, I've sent my 707 sequel. I sent my 940 in. I've sent my bug outs, uh, my, griptilian, my mini griptilians. They all came back perfect. I never had an issue with their warranty. It was fast, effective. They've always given me clips. Um, they don't know who I am, so don't worry. I don't get special treatment. 
Um, one time I got a 940 and the blade looked like it had been burnt in processing. It was like, it had like rainbow hues to it and that made me nervous. So I just told them and they said that they would do a blade replacement. And when I sent in the 940, they just sent me back a brand new 940 free of charge. So I know there are terrible things about Benchmade as well. I have my issues with them. However, their warranty specifically for me has been fantastic. And if I broke an Omega spring on my knife and I didn't want to fix it myself, I would feel very comfortable sending it into Benchmade and getting my knife back without issue. 20 minutes. Do we have anything else to say about these? Um, I'm sure I'm missing something. If you have any questions or comments, put them down below. Like I said, there are numerous update videos with other information more in depth about how these performed, how the sharpenings went, all that good stuff so that this wouldn't be an hour long. But they're both really good knives. I love them. I've always loved both of these. I really wish that the bug out wasn't as expensive because when I got it, it was like 129 bucks or something. And that to me was even a little pricey because it's a plastic freaking knife, right? Um, 180 is just asinine in my opinion, but we're knife nuts. And if you like something, you like something. So we still feed into the hype, I guess. Um, but you know, the testing was great. I had a really fun time with both of these. It was awesome carrying them for a month and testing out all of those different edges. And it was just really cool to see again, how you can have the same steel from the same company, but done by two different knife brands and they just perform so different, right? Really goes to show how important heat tree is and geometry, guys. Geometry, I, I'm probably gonna get hit on this one. Geometry, in my opinion, is more important, more important than heat tree. Um, I think that you can change the entire dynamic of a knife by giving it a specific geometry, really. Um, I, Cause I mean, I've used different steels at like completely different thicknesses and the performance makes it seem like a different knife. You know what I'm saying? Like I've had really thick S45BN, for example, that just didn't perform well at all and just continued to glass out, but it was really tough. And then compared it to like very thin S45VN, um, and it just performs forever and it's like more toothy, you know, it just, it's just the knife science, I guess. But guys, I hope that you enjoyed this review. I hope that, that it was helpful to you. Like I said, if you have any questions or comments, just put them down below. I will try to get back to you as soon as possible. But that was a really fun month of testing. It was a really fun project. It's been in the works for a long time and it was just a blast to do. So that is the conclusion of the Benchmade S30V versus the Spyderco S30V. I hope that you guys stick around for more testing. I have a lot in the works, so I will see you on the next video. Go use your shit. Ooh, that dirty. Learn how to sharpen your knives. Put your mama's number down below for me, and I will see you on the next video. I love you so much. Take care.